Canadian Entertainment Podcast fans, we are back with the Canadian Entertainment Podcast Halloween Election Edition with Joel Edmondson. <laughs> so good to be here. Mr. Halloween himself. Yeah. And yes, the ruby slippers are on and I have not allowed any water in the studio because, yep, when I put Don the Wicked Witch gear, I too am allergic to water. Yeah. I, can you can you give us an eye melting? Do you, do you, would you joke around and do so that, or is that I would too say serious? About Fifteen minutes into the pod, I will be able to do that. I'm still getting yeah. adjusted into the character. Well, it's still me, but uh, well, I will say over. like I, I like I've been with you three times now that you've been wearing this costume. I, I, there's there's something in there. Yeah, I I just I just do find that there's a new sort of aspect of your personality comes out. Like I'm not saying you're a different person, but it is like it does feel like a new version of my friend. Well, I feel extremely confident when I ha- when I uh, have the green on, when I have my cap on, uh, with a wig. Yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't I haven't told anyone yet whether or not that's my real hair or not. So we're gonna okay. Well, out. okay. Well, we uh, might censor that out. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to say I want to bring up that right before the pod yeah. started, you have had the green makeup on for about twenty five minutes. Yep, twenty five minutes. And right before we <laughs> started recording, there's an issue with. <laughs> the microphones and I get I got to see you stressed out in yeah, green micro, makeup. The micro SDs, the micro SD card in the podcast studio was missing, and who do I blame that on? The Munchkins and the Lollipop <laughs> Guild, of course. Because but it was great seeing like stressed out Ben is someone I'm familiar with, but I was, it was great seeing stressed out Ben dressed as the Wicked Witch from Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Well. Oh. Oh. So I'm just a circus act to you? Oh, yeah. No, I get a lot of entertainment out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's my job. I'm an entertainer, mm-hmm. and I'm just a fan. So, yeah. I, so you're a fan of me, Stress, and I'm a fan of you. Thank you. Thank you. I, we can get into all that. Yeah. No. Well, um, Joel. Yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you helped calm me down. Joel actually gave me several technical solutions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I offered him a nicotine pouch. He yeah, said no. No, I couldn't do that because we're not sure how the Wicked re- Witch would react. Yeah, I Dorothy think- wasn't even sure with the water thing. That was a little weird. Dorothy just tried it out, and then it just worked. It's like... What was the bucket of water there for anyway? Was someone mopping? Yeah, I think there was. <laughs> Could have been one of the Winkies, perhaps. Yeah, or maybe the Wicked Witch thought that the broom was a mop. So she yeah, had that and that's out. her fault. That's her yeah. one thing. But she was really stressed out because this girl comes in from Kansas, crushes her Kansas, sister to death. K- Kansada. Kansada. Can- yep. She yeah. comes in from Kansada. Yeah. Why do I feel like I'm in a parallel universe right now? Yeah. Uh, but she comes in. She crashes her sister on. She lands her house on her sister. Yeah. She steals her shoes. So she's in a. The Wicked Witch was in a very intense place when we found her and everyone's like oh she's so crabby she's so unbearable but it's like if that happens to you you'd probably be the same thing you'd be messing up brooms for mops and it's just it's truly a sad story and that's why i decided to get my own spin on it my own take a happy ending where she gets the shoes back here's a a, an another take which you might not like okay but as we know when Dorothy is spinning in her house in the hurricane yep. 
uh, on her way from Kansas to Oz, we do see the Wicked Witch on a bike. We hear that sting. Do 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 do. Do we think if we're looking at it from a conservative take? Hey, I'm a cyclist. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. But yeah. you know, no, Doug Ford. Doug Ford is so anti-cyclist right now. Yeah. And do we think that sh- that the Wicked Witch is actually who caused the house to crash into the Wicked Witch of the East? Interesting. Yeah, because you know they're trying to take out cycle lanes so yep. that like because i guess cyclists are such a huge inconvenience to drivers um you maybe they're also a uh, inconvenience to flying houses so you make a very good point and the jury's it's not conclusive whether or not mrs gulch is the wicked witch or not right we'll say that. mrs Same gulch actor, there's a lot of different she did ride a bike so let's not forget she rode a bike Mrs. Gulch did. So it would be. So maybe. So it could be anti. It could be anti flying house though. Well, uh, there was. Well, it's it's uh, depending on what if you're red or blue, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, and and we'll get into that. I mean, in Canada, red is liberal and blue is conservative. Yeah, it's but wacko it's, town. It's, up yeah, here. we're yeah we're bizarre world up here, but you know, you know, it all depends. That's an interesting take, and I'm gonna have to sit on that. But you know what I thought, and sorry. Don't when sit I, on me, though. Wow. Well, <laughs> Not with that caboose. <laughs> why are you reminding me of Jab of the Hut right now? <laughs> I, I was reading. Um, I I wrote two. Jab of the Hutt. Yeah, I wrote two short stories when I was a little kid mm-hmm. called Star Wars Babies. And yes. I read them, and I think I posted them on one of my socials. You'll have to check the archives. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the pages is like. And then Princess Leia had to sit on Jabba's lap. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, how did they, they were babies? The yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But it said that Leia like, was that a baby in the thing. I don't know. But then they also went to Sports World, and I don't know. Oh. I like Muppet Babies. Well, they, they didn't call it Binghamins at that time, I guess. No, that's actually a different place. Bingaman. Wait, Sports World I thought was, Sports World became Binghamins. No, Sports World. It was like a theme park. And yeah, I know. I remember. A separate like entity. So it's what's a, Sports a World now? Time town. That's where the Moose Wadooskis is. That's the only thing that really stands from the um, from the Sports World complex. There used to be a big a, like a hockey arena there too, right. where you could play hockey. But really, where the Moose Winooskis is in Kitchener is where the sports world stood. It has stood the, t- the test of time. It is kind of like some people say that cockroaches would... S- I'm not... Hey, we... You know what? Finish that thought. Finish that no, thought. Well, you know what I've learned? I was, I was about cockroaches could stand a nuclear blast. Well, so could Moose Winooskis. I was going to say, oh, are people going to try to cancel me and say, oh, did you just compare Moose Winooskis to a cockroach? I said, well, why do you think cockroaches are, are a bad thing? People also think the Wicked Witch is was is a bad thing, but I have turned a lot of people's minds around to that. Some this people week. like cockroaches. I've been doing a lot of advocacy on that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it all depends on your you know place in life like if you're in a basement apartment you don't like cockroaches but if you're in a penthouse suite and you have a pet then you do like cockroaches yeah. um uh you have a pet cockroach you know yes. they, yeah they're they're real people don't talk about this cockroaches are really lovey loving they're really they're, lo- they're very they're very they loyal give me hard eyes they really give me hard yeah. eyes um i want to just bring up that i used to go to sports world as a kid i fucked with that what yeah did you know that no Ashton Kutcher, you think you think I'm punking you right now? They're rebooting everything at this point. I just <laughs> that would I be a I, hilarious punk for a close <laughs> friend of yours just to tell you that he went to Sports World <laughs> as a kid. You have your mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> There's cameras from every angle. That'd be cool. Ashton Kutcher I comes got, out and goes, "Ben, we got you." I got pissed off like Zach Braff does. What did, he gets really pissed off. What did what did they do to Zach Braff? I just know he gets. I don't have. They told all, him. They, I don't have the mental capacity. Well, they told him Scrubs was fake. <laughs> 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 they told him it wasn't a documentary. Yeah, he was sorry, a, man. You know, you're, film, you're a doctor. He was filming for like seven years, and the whole time he thought it was a Michael Moore documentary <laughs> about the American healthcare system. So it wasn't so a pu- it wasn't <laughs> punked. It was intervention. It was yeah. I'm telling him. That's yeah, yeah. They it all came. True. Out. They should um, do a collab. 
Wow. So yeah, it's really good to be on the podcast. Yep. I have I have appeared for ten minutes at the end of an episode once. Yeah, but yep. I'm, and you're I'm, there doing the <laughs> you were there once during the Lost podcast. Where I was oh like, yes, the, the Lost podcast. That I remember one good riff you had during that podcast. Am I allowed to bring it up? Sure. I don't. I don't remember what <laughs> Cana- was. Canadian Christmas Carol. Oh, the Canadian Christmas Carol. <laughs> yes. I Uh-oh. don't remember who Scrooge was, okay. but I do remember <laughs> who <laughs> the, the ghost of Christmas past was. Oh, was it our buddy? <laughs> it was Don Cherry was dressed Don- as the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> yeah, he always makes an appearance in my fiction, buddy. <laughs> he always makes an appearance in... I'll get you too, Toto. Uh, I got work on it. No, it was really good. It's- you're, you're your own self. We're self-critic, man. Like... Well, that was we really all? good. Hmm? Aren't we all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a lost podcast. And you know what? I actually gave it to... Um, uh, I gave it to Universal Pictures. They bought it. It's in one of their vaults. Canadian I trust Christmas them. Carol? Yeah. Well, no. That podcast Just episode. Just that podcast and in general. Okay. Yeah. There, but Canadian Christmas Carol, too. I ha- I'm... Yeah. There's a, there's a Celtex... A document I started and I actually sent it to Universal too. And I said, can you store this? Because I was thinking after the Universal fire, I was like, well, who do I trust more? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they really have amped up their security and like fire safety there. So that's why I'm storing that with Universal, the Lost Canadian Entertainment Podcast episode and Canadian Christmas Carol, the Celtex document. I, I, and I would love to, you know, be... I, I, I don't have the money for investment right now, but I would love to be an angel investor, you know? Yep. Well, because um, I got scammed $850, I don't have the money to invest right now. So. Oh, shit. Oh, so you're bringing up the questions we had in the pre interview. Yes, I was supposed to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Joel, tell yeah. me, as a Canadian entertainer, how were you scammed? So, $800 Canadian, right? $850 Canadian. I, I, was, I, I got into a taxi cab outside of an, a singer songwriter Andy Schaff concert. And the taxi driver uh, stole my debit card and my PIN number and, and stole $850 from me and the CIBC company. Yeah. So, you essentially went into the reverse cash cab you gave the you exactly gave, yep. it was reverse cash cab and i was asking him trivia questions too <laughs> oh. yeah whoa and what were the categories um we had you know sports yep um legends just like the just kind of like the legend of bagger vans Bay Wolf. Bay oh, Wolf. yeah oh, okay. yeah that kind of stuff yep. um another one was it was kind of like a fun jeopardy one like fill in the blank type deal yep but it was like, it was dirty. It was, it was like kind of sexy fill in the blanks. Oh, so see, was, why does my mind go to, why did my mind go to bathroom stuff? Well, I mean, bathroom, you know, you can have sex in a bathroom, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, you can do that. So you're telling me people have had in a bathroom before? People had to have. People se- have had in the bathroom? <laughs> You're censoring yourself so you don't have to bleep it later. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, okay. So, 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 how many questions did he get right then? Well, he got. I I think he 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 got like a seven good 75, 70, 80 eighty percent. He was really good at the legend stuff. Like he knew all about Legend of Bagger, Bagger Vance and you know Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda. He yeah, about, uh, he knew about that. It was like one of his specialties. But he yeah. was he was totally beefing it on the sports questions. Like oh. fucking just face planting. Let me guess. He didn't know that Spud Webb won a dunk competition. Yeah, yep, he, he forgot that. about that. It was mostly dunk competition questions. Actually, he forgot. Yeah. He forgot about Steve Nash doing the kicking. Oh, did he forget about the birthday can? The guy who blew about up the birthday, birthday candles. Candle? Yeah, he for- totally, See, totally fucking so beefed it on the birthday like, candle thing. I, I've seen this done so many times. Um, literally, just watching uh, uh, Jeopardy and stuff. So many people. They are so trained for sports categories that they forget about. Oh, I have to study dunk competition. Yeah, I have to study 
baking competitions yes. i have to skills start. competitions yeah, yeah like yeah. anything yeah like they forget about they they think that it's just regular season stuff no we're doing the novelty kind of the fun stuff in between so the grand the prize derbies. was bigger than eight so 850 was kind of a it's kind of a lo- loser's prize eh it was it was a consolation prize wow. yeah but it was everything i had in my bank account <sighs> No. So it, be, it he wasn't able to steal from my friend Jordan, but had he was able to, it would it would have been because he got all the sports questions. God, why? why see, I that's why I, I I don't trust reality shows and stuff like that because you could get scammed. I've heard about, I heard about how um, I heard recently how Mark Burnett promised that he would pay. Richard Hatch's uh, taxes, taxes. And he never did, and, and he, went, he to went to jail. So the same thing could happen to you. So you mm-hmm. better, you better um, talk when when you're doing your ta- Canadian taxes next year. You better say, "Look, hey, I hosted this game show, Reverse Cash Cab, mm-hmm. in a cab, and I gave out eight hundred and fifty dollars as a cash prize. Do I need to pay taxes on that? Or you could face hard time like Richard Hatch did." Yeah, and yeah, well, Mark Burnett was in the front seat as well. Oh. Yeah, so I that's when I should have known. I, I should have, like, it was, like, I honestly didn't even know I was on the show. They gave me the the, the, the questions when oh. I came in, too. So, like, I, I was, it was a scam from the front to the back. I should have known when Mark Burnett was in the cab that, I, that, that something was up, though. Did you know you're in Sherman show? Like right now? Yeah. So I w- was waiting till we had some cameras. So you're in Truman Show as well. <laughs> I'm in Truman Show since I was born? Yep. So since you- you've been born and I've been one of the characters. Wow. What It, it would be so elaborate if... If I if There's my a Truman show if Canada. I was like a Truman show if I was the Truman show that my all my friends had podcasts like it would be like this weird yeah. universe no but, but Truman shows adjusting to the 21st century buddy so That's all of Truman's insane. buddies have podcasts yeah <laughs> <laughs> with hundreds of episodes that I don't even listen to. yeah yeah buddy no no it's it's it you, we really have had to make it believable so that's why yeah the Canadian Entertainment podcast is literally just a part of your show right so right. you own this podcast technically you're Interesting. executive producer oh, this is, so you could do whatever you want this, my mind should be more blown but for some reason i'm not fucking surprised well yeah you know what Nothing the world revolves me. around me anyway i just know it yeah. so yeah so it makes sense yeah just keep on doing your thing it's getting great ratings in the outside is world. It? that's it's good doing really well it's good thanks so. for telling me yeah i honestly yeah i i guess i would just stay in this in the life world. yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I on if I found out my life, especially in this moment where I where I've had such a uh, a difficult year, yeah, it would be like with the scam and the bed bugs and the flood and everything else. You sound like Noah, like of Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant I thought you meant our friend Noah Maloney. No, well, <laughs> he's probably named after him. But yeah, um, you have had an. You've had a biblical sort of I've, year. I've had eh? a biblical year, but so if you told me that it, my life was a Truman Show, I would be so relieved. Yeah. I would be mad at the producers for putting me through this. To yeah, be honest. like what the fuck? Yeah, th- yeah, that was. Yeah, that this was like bed a- bugs buying you. Those were those were production assistants. <laughs> they broke into your apartment. <laughs> And they're, Just, they bit you. There's a bunch of behind the scenes footage yeah. of these 21 year old boys biting my legs and yeah. arms. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty elaborate. So. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, if this if it was a Truman Show, I would be really relieved. I would walk out into the you know past that fucking cardboard. Sc- yeah, like like Ontario cardboard yeah, sign. Oh, uh, it'd be lovely. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we could do that after the podcast if you want it to be done. Yeah, no, I'd be down to finish the pod. Yeah, it's, what, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good end to my Truman Show career. We call it the Truman Show uh, colon Joel, right? Yes, and that's what it is called. But honestly, so I will say this. Mm-hmm. All I will say is, um, if you, um, if you let me finish before you retort, but. Well, you, how what would I retort if you didn't finish? Sorry to come at sorry to come at you. Sorry to come at you. Everything sexual, <laughs> anyways. I did not make that. Oh, finish. I see. 
Sorry, sorry. <laughs> wow, Ben Stagger with the cum joke. Um, well... Okay, so go on. What were you going to say? Do you even have a thought in your ben. brain? No, I have many thoughts. Okay. You are confusing me with the scarecrow. <laughs> the witch had a brain. Yeah. The witch has a brain. What would but, the witch ask for if she went to the, the wizard? Well, I think it's very simple. And they are on the bottom of my feet right now. Or would she wish for her sister to be alive again? She might wish for that, or she might wish for the ruby slippers. Right. Or, okay. But I need to tell you. Yeah. So first, I was going to say, if you wait five more years, we all get sick-ass pensions. So you might want to consider waiting five more okay. years. But additionally, I will say this. After this podcast is done, if you don't want us to get the sick-ass pensions, yeah, you can make a call or whatever. Get me one because I told you. <laughs> are, would they, are they mad at you for telling me right now? Um, is, Ed, is Canadian Ed Harris in your ear being like, Ben, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I he I will get a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> I will get a spanking. But uh, and he dresses like this too. <laughs> the, you know You're dressed so they, as they, him. Uh, so in the Truman Show movie, which they made for you because the real show is Truman <laughs> Truman Joel. <laughs> Uh, I, so, Truman Joel. <laughs> that's the real show that they based it off of. You know how Ed Harris wears the funny cap? Yeah, yeah. So they they were like, that's more believable than what he that actually wears because that? this is what he wears. <laughs> but Joel, I will say this. I will say this. Um, so, so talk to the executive producers because I have an easier way that you could get to the outside world then we go on a boat into lake ontario then you have to go to the cardboard Buffalo thing. Yeah, or whatever yeah. and then it's cardboard yeah. instead of doing the whole boat thing i will let you wear my ruby slippers you click your heels four times you say you, there's no place like home and then you will go to your hometown on the outside world which i there's an oakville out there as well and, and it's the oakville i grew up in the same oakville they based it off of that. So it's very okay. similar. It's very <laughs> That's very What about my so, parents? So, so, so the thing is, yeah, they're very <laughs> similar to the ones who are acting as your parents right now. The, similar, <laughs> the weird thing is, is the outside world hasn't embraced technology as much as we have in on your television show. Wow. So, so this is kind of science fiction. So it is show, science yeah. fiction. So Oakville will be a lot more like your childhood. It's very like, right. you don't have all these EV vehicles. And right, like, yeah. Oh. Cineplex has doesn't have 40x no, yet. No, yeah. no. So th that's all. That's all television magic. The oh, silver. okay, cool. And TVs are. I might I miss say, 40x to be honest. Well, yeah. Do they so have D box? Do they have D box years, at least? Five years. They have D box. <laughs> okay. Uh, but 40x, they don't have it yet. Okay. But um, so yeah, that's why the. the can I still see Venom three? You can is see it, Venom three, but it's it, different actors. It is all different actors. Um, <laughs> this is so, a very so the, elaborate the show. People, <laughs> the people that play your parents in your current TV show actually star in Venom three. <laughs> They're massive. My dad as Venom? <laughs> yeah, they're massive uh, star. They're big actors. Wow. Right? Okay, so, cool. Yeah, because once you moved out of Oakville, Ryan started your adult life. They were able to book a lot of more <laughs> roles. And that's because now they're only guest stars, right? So they, they're <laughs> massive on the outside world. So. <laughs> My dad has just had Tom Hardy's career since I went he, to college. Yeah. He has. I, that's weird. Be, it is funny because Tom Hardy started to be bigger when I went to call, like yeah. in, in my college years. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's why my dad loves The Revenant so much because yeah. he's in it in the other on the other yeah. side. And, uh, I have. Uh, this will blow your mind. But three words for you, please. Star Trek Insurrection. No, <laughs> you got it wrong. Oh. Oh, Keep Star trying. Trek Nemesis. Thank you. Sorry, they actually, in the outside world, they have the two titles flipped. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Well, yeah, I get, I'm trying to, maybe it's when I went away to camp when they filmed uh, Star Trek Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. You're d so, so th in this world, it didn't do too well. But <laughs> in the other world, the guy you know who plays your dad actually won the Oscar. He killed it. He, he killed it, Oscar, yeah. So. But There's then he was like, "Well, Joel has his teenage years. We have to get into that. Exactly. Sorry, I, I can't. I can't capitalize on the Oscar I yeah. won for Star Trek Insurrection." <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh man, so there's a lot going on in that outside world. But we'll show you. We'll show you. I, I can't wait. To, I literally, I it's it, it's heartbreaking to find out my dad isn't really my dad. But I can't wait to see him in the bike riders. And I will I will say one another thing to you. Yeah, I can't wait to see him in that too. But mm. guess who the prime minister of Canada is in the outside world? Who? Eastside Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eastside Mario. <laughs> well, is is Eastside Mario in the outside world? Is he the same as Nintendo Mario? He is exactly the same. Because that's as a kid, that's what I thought. I thought he, they were connected. It's the same. It's the exact same guy. And um, I, this will be another thing that blow your mind. But um, Japan and Canada are the same thing. In, <laughs> it's called Japanada. <laughs> You know Francis Sokio from uh, Big Hero Six. They base that off the outside world. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that I guess that makes sense because like Eastside Mario's is a Canadian chain. Yeah. And so, and so Nintendo. <laughs> so why for this show? Why for the Truman Joel did they separate Japan and Canada? Um, is that just like a science fiction thing? Like while like Quebec and Canada like. Well, the weird thing is, is like, um, so one of the actors in the early show, um, you asked, you don't remember this because you can't watch the older episodes, but you asked when you're a little kid, you're like, (laughs) is Japan, is it this, is it one thing or it's two separate countries, right? And by accident, the actor who is playing your uncle Devin, I don't remember my Uncle Devin. <laughs> yeah, they, wrote him, they, they wrote him out. out. They wrote him out. Yeah. He, tra- he had a spit off. <laughs> he had a spit off. <laughs> but um, he, uh, yeah, he accidentally said that it's actually two separate countries. So <laughs> then they had to go with that for the rest of the and series. And they fired him and he got his own show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would love to watch the Uncle Devin show. Yeah. Is it like Joey? Did it last? For, did it? How many seasons did you get? It, <laughs> it was a 16 season. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uncle Devin, you killed it. It was, yeah, it was. Am I like a, like a dis, like the way they talk about like Sam Malone on, on Frasier? Am I like a distant character? Yep, like, you yeah. are. Yeah. And they've, um, yeah, <laughs> they've, uh, th- they've actually, uh, sometimes I, I mean, you signed off on this when you got out when you were born but yeah sometimes they use your f- face on like other actors oh really like deep fake type stuff yeah wow well it's a I lot don't more know. how could i agree to that as a baby did they like take my hand and sign well, it oh yeah rules are different out there oh okay so, yeah so you've had a lot of people <laughs> one of the most famous people to actually play that they deep fake in the uncle devon show they um <laughs> <laughs> That they have actually, uh, well, the most famous people to play your sort of like David Prowse and yeah. Darth Vader. You, they, you, they generate your voice and stuff, mm-hmm. and they have the Joel deep fake is. But the most famous person to play all your body movements is uh, Liza Minnelli. Wait, the like the Liza Minnelli on that side, or does she play herself? On she this? she didn't die. She just she she she's, she re- she's she, not dead. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. I'm you gay. should know this, Judy Garland expert. So sometimes I get both worlds mixed up. Okay. So, um, yeah, so she plays you on the outside world, too. Really? Yeah, she's really busy. And they deep fake her. Yeah. You'd think they just get like an unknown if they're going to deep fake. No, but they really thought she played you right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Liza. Yeah, yeah. And she- that's actually an honor as a fan of the Wicked Witch. Yeah. And, uh, and Dorothy, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm such a big fan of both of those characters. Even though I feel like one was misportrayed, but mm-hmm. it eats me up, definitely. But um, I'm trying to get over it. I've been wondering, like, what happened to Margaret Hamilton's kids? Like, why don't they act? They founded Hamilton, Ontario. I know that. Oh, so they, I, they must be busy with that. Yeah, they must. And I, and I think that they also helped Lin-Manuel Miranda write In the Heights. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Better they miss did. misdirector. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So when Lin- before Lin Manuel Miranda, actually, him calling Hamilton Hamilton wasn't about Alexander Hamilton. It was a thank you to Margaret Hamilton's kids for helping him write uh, in the Heights. Dude, he's so. Um, he's gracious. What he does, he's so kind. He's, he's got a lot of gratitude. That guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can wanna, tell he's soft. I just. Didn't, yeah. Is it weird that I want to give him a back massage? No, it's not. I'm kidding. He does a lot of movements. You know, he probably like he does a lot of dancing on stage and yeah, stuff. Like he he bends over backwards to make his career work. He's so one of the best dancers of all time. Yeah, I put him up there for sure. Gregory he, Hines, Lin Manuel Miranda, Fred yeah. Astaire, Fred Astaire. Yeah. Um, it's weird that there's no like really big dancers right now. I feel like the last besides I guess some Sam of the Rockwell. Sam Rockwell's a dancer. Well, he always dances when he goes on the Tonight Show. <sighs> I oh, oh I, I know another dancer, Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, yeah. Well, they try to cancel her. B- because of how good of a dancer she was. She was really taking a lot of people's jobs. Yeah, exactly. People yeah. were people were pretty pissed about that. She, 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 she was working uh, at the Eaton Center at H&M on, on her off days. People were really oh, pissed about that, yeah. Dude, oh my God, she worked there? Yeah, she was folding clothes. <clears throat> you know what H and M stands for? What? Um, um, Harvey's and, and McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> why am I acting like the scarecrow now? I don't feel like I have a brain no more. Sorry, I just got to a riff qu- for quicker than you did. I'm sorry, man. No, like, that's amazing. No, yeah. you're filling in the blanks that I don't know because I'm drawing a blank. Harvey's and McDonald's and A and W stands for Arby's and Wendy's. And, well, then what does H&R block stand for? H&R stands for uh, Hardee's and and Ronald McDonald's. Oh, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. I, he has his hand on everything. Including my heart. Yeah, well, he, he is like, McDonald's Canada is really big and I feel like he really helped to build it. You know what I'm thinking about right now, Ben? What? The time we were at a party and uh, a friend of a friend of ours came up to us and told us that she was listening to your podcast while she was in very stressful traffic. Yeah, and I was naming off like different <laughs> occupations I've had. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. If you're listening right now. I'm just thinking you being like, yeah, Ronald McDonald, he's like the goat. And like someone is like <laughs> yeah. near like almost dying in yeah. a car crash yeah. listening to this in their car. Yeah. <laughs> this would, yeah, I would, I, I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone that listens to this podcast. Well, do I'm you so- have, do you have enough listeners where statistically someone must have had, have died while listening to your podcast? I'm not allowed to, so you know how, um. So you know how Trump never gives out his tax returns? Yeah, Netflix well, never tells how I how much. I am not people. a lot. So I'm, there's a couple of rules with me. I can't reveal my age. Mm-hmm. I can't reveal my IQ, and I don't. <laughs> 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 and I cannot reveal uh, my how many listeners. Yeah, the data. It's just not fair. Data. Yep, yeah, mommy too. <laughs> Joel, um, so another reason I brought you here yes. that I scheduled you in, um, <laughs> that I scheduled in on this date. You penciled November, me in, yeah. November 2nd yeah. Um, was because uh, two days ago, Halloween, mm-hmm. it was um, actually your buddy's birthday. Who? John Candy. Oh, really? He's born on Halloween. Wow, Scorpio. Yeah, he's Scorpio. I didn't know he was such a vitriolic son of a bitch well you know I what guess, i'm a scorpio too oh right yeah so, you you're a diamond in the rough though yeah you're not like other scorpios but you know what we all have our bad days but john candy um he's your favorite actor <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's awesome was he ever in a horror movie i know you like a lot of horror he was movies. in nothing but trouble which a lot of people call it, is a um horror comedy that was directed by uh uh, Dan Aykroyd and he, he stars as like a 110 year old man and he wears makeup and he looks disgusting oh no yeah does it take place in Canada oh god I watched it recently and I thought it was absolutely dog shit 
but uh, I do not remember if it takes place in Canada or not. I feel like it takes place in the States, though. I feel like there's like desert or something, but it could take place in Canada. I don't think oh. it does, but yeah. It is. Uh, he looks like a fucking foot in that movie. I, he kind of looks like the way he does now, to be honest, though. Well, yeah. Not John pres- Candy, Dan Aykroyd. Oh, Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Oh, so he looks like future Dan Aykroyd. In a bit, a bit, but like maybe not quite, but it doesn't look, <laughs> he's he's going that, he's going that direction. He looks like fucking shit in those fucking Caesar Day commercials. So is that, the, is that, um, is that the, uh, <laughs> is that the John Candy movie? <laughs> where, <laughs> where? I can't wait for this thought to come to fruition. I <laughs> want to hear what you're thinking about. So is that the John Candy movie where there's a scene where, <laughs> where, where, where John Candy, uh, uh, where John Candy, uh, <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> where John Candy? <laughs> where John Candy has? A, Somebody where, get this man a glass of water. Where John Candy has a. Uh, uh, where John Candy has a twerk off <laughs> against, <laughs> against against Leslie Nielsen inside. <laughs> is that is that the joke? <laughs> <laughs> is that the one what are you talking about Sorry. no you're thinking of who's harry crumb ah uh, yeah that is a, a big this is about a 30 minute scene <laughs> the movie comes to a total halt and uh the the guy let's get ready to rumble guy comes on mic and says <laughs> We're about to have a twerk off in this corner. The guy who's playing, who's been playing Harry Crumb this whole time, John Candy, out of character, and also Leslie Nielsen <laughs> from the Naked Gun movies, and also a pop star that you'll know about in twenty years. His name is Cy. He's, he's he'll be a one hit wonder in the North America, but he's very famous in his where he's oh, from. Oh, so it's in that movie. That's what. That's yeah, what who's Harry Crumb? Yeah, when Gangnam Style came out, I was like, everyone was like, have you heard this guy? I was like, oh, the guy from <laughs> the, <laughs> the twerk off scene <laughs> with Leslie Nielsen and John Candy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that brought me back. I remember being really confused when I watched that movie as a kid. Yeah, same here. Like who is Psy? Um But yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, no worries. It's funny that John Candy's birthday is Halloween because his last name is Candy. I know. And classically, I was we give out that. candy. Maybe that was God's uh, like big Halloween joke was giving birth, to, giving the Candy family more candy on Halloween. True, because people put candy outside their house. Sometimes, if they're not home, yeah. yeah. But most of the time, it's they don't put it out. They guess they put it outside their house when they reach outside their house and put it into a, a, a child's pillowcase. They put it in a child. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was very visual. Yeah. They put. Oh, okay. For some reason, what you were saying, put it in a child's pillowcase. <laughs> I was picturing. I was picturing like a tooth fairy sort of thing. And, okay, so I really, I was really confused. But I get it now. That is like, what the they. That's what they originally outside? did on Halloween. The yeah. kids wouldn't go anywhere. They would just lie in bed in costume, and all their neighbors would come over. <laughs> like candy in their <laughs> under their pillow, and the kid would have to pretend to be yeah. asleep, or else they'd have to have all their candy taken away. Oh, uh, imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah, imagine trying to sleep with like a like a bunch of like Toblerones. Underneath, underneath you it'd be very but, challenging yeah that would be spiky yep I, be I have spiky. a bad enough my bed frame right now is digging into my back i need to get a, a new mattress or a big piece of plywood to put underneath my mattress so Yay. i kind of know what that would feel like i maybe like i don't i I know it was probably a mistake to build my bed frame out of toblerones but uh i just i like the idea of it it's really it, I just like being it's underneath. Better. I like, I like, I wanted a Swedish made bed, you know, like 
ikea stuff is like so big right now or i guess i, no, I, I guess Toblerone is switzerland uh but that's that so i was like i went for the other sw yeah. country you know with the with the Toblerone thing and isn't that interesting that you live in southwestern ontario and sometimes people SW. Put sw ontario yeah that's mm-hmm. so interesting about yeah it. we are kind of like switzerland or sweden southwestern ontario I in agree a way. With yeah, you. we are yeah we have a lot of ikeas yeah it's true one um oh, oh. They skiing. Sell Swiss che- yeah, the skiing. Skiing, some skiing, yeah. And Swiss cheese is sold at our grocery store. So I was actually thinking exactly what you're thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, Swiss Army knife. Yeah, and they sell Swiss Army knives and um, Swiss. Swiss chalet. Swiss chalet. See, you're so right. There is That's like something no one talks about, the Swiss influence on Ontario. Yeah. Because Swiss chalet isn't even in some of the other provinces. So it's like... Yeah. Especially southwestern Ontario. I don't know why any, no one's willing to have that conversation, but we are, and we never get picked up on. We, you know that you know this podcast is. It doesn't reach all the algorithms because uh, news is banned on social so media s- platforms in Canada. And sometimes is, a lot of people get their news from this podcast. I know, I, I and as they should. Um, sometimes CBC will play like a podcast that's not theirs you yeah. know like the way like this american life will play like clips of another podcast yeah. to like fit their theme right i think that it would be an incredible opportunity for cbc to play this clip right now well when us talking about the swiss influence on ontario like not a lot of people talk about that you know what really interesting it's to so interesting when you upload something on the internet any like a thing can go viral like that and get into the hands of CBC. So I wouldn't be surprised if this happens with this episode once we upload it onto YouTube or mm-hmm. some of the other social media platforms. Mm-hmm. It would, yeah, this is. I <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised if it didn't. I know. Be I honest. will be. Yeah. And I I'm I I don't know. I honestly, if 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 this doesn't get reported on CBC, like I might have to. <laughs> Go on. I might have. <laughs> I might have to. Um, <laughs> I might have to uh, go to CBC headquarters and just. Um, and honestly, bounce your fists on the table. Well, and I was thinking go into the newsroom <laughs> and and um, make a poopy diaper. <laughs> Make a poopy diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I just stand there. <laughs> Ooh, what's that smell? <laughs> I'm dressed like this. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> There's two things happening in the studio right now. There's a man dressed as a Wicked Witch of the West, and also it smells like fucking shit. What's going on? Could the two be related at all? <laughs> It's just in a man dressed as the Wicked Witch of the West has come into our studio and shit himself. <laughs> Leslie Manbridge. You know what? I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to be like, guys, I made it easy for you. I'm, I'm wearing a diaper right now. I have a bunch of clean ones here. So, so someone just needs to change me. <laughs> And play this clip, and then I bring. I, I have, I have, I have the SD card, <laughs> and then I have the, I have the GarageBand file, and it don't, and they have to sync, sync the audio and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you guys would have got this before it was live on YouTube, so that's why I'm so. Pissed. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I you go into Q Studio. Tom Powers interviewing <laughs> the Beaches Band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be crazy! Like, so, tell me about the new album. Oh, do you smell that, <laughs> dude? I swear, I saw him once at a comedy show. At nothing fancy. I think he's. Uh, I, I I won't say on mic, but he is friends with someone we know, a comedian. Uh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I will I not. I will not. That? I would no. Do I have to I, edit that? I don't out? think you okay, have to edit okay, that. Okay. No. 
Okay, yeah. I would ju- I would try to do a lot of sad edits, you know. It's just that, you know it, that would be insane if you edited that <laughs> out. <laughs> like you're being like, Oh god, is Tom well, Power gonna be mad at well, me? Well well here's the thing. There's a really famous quote, I think, from uh I think it's from Phil Spector. Oh guy that guy just made quotes no he, he was quotes. so good at qu- making yeah, quotes no, but yeah he compared he compared the song good vibrations to the movie psycho because there's so many cuts in it he said was there a real film so i wanted to make sure that my I phil like specter is very, a fucking no, idiot i know he's an idiot but i don't he'd be very critical of this podcast if i cut that out yeah <laughs> I wave my cap at you. I wave my cap at him. Wow. He d- he mentioned one of the best songs of all time and one of the best movies of all time. It, it's <laughs> to make a, ne- a point about them both negatively. Yeah. <laughs> I idiot. know. He was crazy. So, you know what? Nobody I will heard. stand up for Death of a Ladies, man. I think that's a good, it's a and great record. I also record. think that great the record. Ramones album yeah. directed by him, or Did he do it? Pet Cemetery? Uh, I don't think he did. Oh, that I song's know. awesome. I really like that song. We too. watched that the other day. I want to rewatch that movie, but I only can next Halloween. <laughs> it's cool, though. It's like, um, yeah, I really like the song, and I really like uh, that movie. There's something about these 90s uh, Stephen King adaptations that are really good. I think it was like, 80s. It was 80s. 80s. Yeah. 80s. Well, late 80s. And, you know what? Later, 80s to late, 90s. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. He's like, he was on a... Can you... Would you... Uh, I, I only know the one line from Pet Cemetery, but do you think you could harmonize with me if I sang... Yep. I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. Okay, okay. Can you try again? Okay. I don't want to be buried uh, in a pet cemetery. Okay, right, 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 okay. uh, uh, I, I, so where you're going for that. I, uh, uh, oh, shit. Uh, one. You go, you go. I don't, don't want to be, be buried. <laughs> <'Cause> they're perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's ringing. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. I don't want to be buried in a pet, pet cemetery. cemetery. That was good. Yeah. That was really good. Oh, I really love that song. I yeah. love the Ramones. Mm-hmm. I wish we had a Canadian Ramones. We had Teenage Head. They played in Niagara Falls last night. And let me guess. Their names were Joey Teenage Head, Marky Teenage Head, <laughs> Ryan Teenage Head. No, that'd be cool. Although I was thinking, of, uh, the the six Ramon brother, Ryan Ramon, <laughs> Ryan Ramon. Ryan is such a not punk rock name, eh? Yeah. If his if his name would be Ryan, he'd have to change Ryan it. Ryan Ramon. Rye. Rye Ramon. Yeah, I guess that could work. Sometimes yeah. they do like little like, yeah, like... Nicknames. Alcohol sort of thing. I'm thinking of like the... What's that bad? The Germs, who their they're, they're rhythm guitarist. Whiskey what Jones. Whiskey Jones. <laughs> Whiskey Jones. I had a doctor. Or no, I, what I, was I, the drummer's name? Wait, the, no, the rhythm guitarist of uh, freaking the, the Germs, Germs, who was Nirvana's... Rhythm guitarist near the end of their career. Oh, uh, Pat Smear. Pat Smear. Sort of like Pat Smear. Yes, Pat Smear, his assistant was on Survivor in season 39. Oh my God. His did personal they bring assistant. Up Nirvana? They did. Well, she did in her, her preseason interviews, but they did not bring Pat Smear up for the entire show. I was pretty pissed off. Wow. But yeah. That'd be, uh, <laughs> that'd be crazy if Jeff brought that up at Tribal Council. So, Lauren, tell us about Pat Smear and how being his assistant helped you through... So, what was it like when Pat Smear left the Foo Fighters on, <laughs> on like, the third album, then came oh back God, for Skin yeah. and Bones? Oh what was God. that like? You know, it was it was really tough, and the way, the way we voted out, um, you know, Janet last week, it really made me think about that. Oh, Noah's, Noah's <laughs> thinking... Uh, there's like a big like twist <laughs> like or like the tribe like finds out that like like she hides that she's an assistant for Pat Smear mm-hmm. and they're like 
and she was hiding that shit like they work against yeah, yeah it's like Russell that's why Hans. they voted out, yeah. vote her out yeah or at the yeah she went out she went out final four she was like supposed to win and then they voted her out dude pat Smear's life must have just been an absolute mess when she was um doing that eh yeah who Not was having the assist yeah who's, who's answering his, his calls that's a good question. <laughs> russell hands yeah russell hands <laughs> i could see you doing that for for listeners at home, Russell Hance is like a legendary Survivor player, and I, I guess we're not in plugs yet, but I, I do have a Survivor podcast. Merge so boot. yeah, um, and Russell Hance was a villainous man, and just thinking about him as a uh, the rhythm guitarist from Nirvana's personal assistant is really opening up a new portal in my brain. Well, you know what? When that happened, that was probably when Dave Grohl cheated on his. Uh wife and had a and had a baby well this was like five years ago lines up does it <laughs> <laughs> no but did you not hear that that um the 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 kid that dave Grohl had like the girl that he had the kid with she had one of these freak pregnancies where it's, she was pregnant wait, for five, five years. years yeah oh i've heard about those yep. yeah yep the, the embryo state just just chills for five <laughs> years yeah. and then decides to grow yeah yeah it's crazy no i was just picturing when we were talking about that i was picturing russell hands in a wicked witch gear i mean he basically was the wicked he witch really on survivor is. he was he is the wicked witch of the survivor community still yeah is he still making like is he still have a podcast yeah stuff? yeah he's he's such he's an asshole about the like, game. always he's complaining about how survivors too woke now and shit like oh, that that's always complain. is he st- so he's more on that sort of thought than is he still thinking that the game needs to be changed for it to be like pure like survivor game? oh yeah so russell hance has an inherent misunderstanding of survivor and he always pretends like it, on his YouTube show and his podcast pretends like he knows everything about survivor, but you check the tapes and he's lost the game (laughs) twice at the end. And both times he said that there's a flaw in the game because he lost because the jury votes because the jury votes and he thinks it should be public voted and he thinks he should be on American idol, I guess. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Russell Hans is a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he, he, yeah i know well he listens so i'm just yeah i made a sacrifice for you joel he's one of our top listeners oh man i'm sorry man it's, russell, okay. it's okay no i'm not i'm not saying sorry to you i'm sorry i'm saying sorry to russell yeah okay I now that it, now that i know that he's listening i'm 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 i'm, I'm pulling back no, what i was he saying gets it, right he can take it right yeah he's so, do you think he's shorter than me or do you think he's about my height um is your height something you reveal on mike well, I said in a recent sketch the truth about my height. You're four nine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sh- shorter than Sabrina Carpenter. Oh, you're shorter than Sabrina Carpenter. Uh, well, That'd be cr- I would need to see Dude. Russell Hans stand you know next what? to Sabrina Carpenter. I, know, I was know, just yeah. thinking. Imagine if Sabrina Carpenter started <laughs> Russell. Hans. She breaks up with Barry Keoghan. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. And then, do uh, we know if she's would, John Carpenter's daughter or not? I don't know, and we yeah. don't know if she's. Related to the Carpenters, we don't know if she's related to Sabrina, the teenage, teenage witch. witch. Speaking of Wicked Witch, yeah, yep. There's a lot of mm-hmm. connections to a lot of certain things I've noticed just in the world. Mm-hmm. Everything's connected in a certain way. She is related to the voice of Bart Simpson, though. We've all talked about it. We've all Nancy thought, Cartwright. Is, did you know she is actually the niece of Nancy Cartwright? That's wild that's blowing my mind more than finding out that my life is a truman show no but it's it is and this is and you know sometimes i i like to just go crazy and Mm -hmm. and just like you know like you know just how like use my imagination but this is a no cap statement this is a no cap (laughs) statement can you believe it joel oh my god do we need to call the police and the EMS, are you going to be okay? I'm going to be okay because okay. I I thought about uh, how another uh, Simpsons voice actor. It blew my mind finding out that uh, Yeardley Smith's sister is actually <laughs> named Monthly Smith. Oh, huh? <laughs> and Yeardley Smith is in Maximum Overdrive. Oh, stop it! Yes, who and th- which? If the listeners don't know, is the only movie that Stephen King directed. And the the main bad guy in that is a 
truck that looks like a goblin looks a lot like Ben right now. I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Wait, so next thing you're going to tell me is that Dan Castellanta <laughs> uncle was a ca a cast Castellanta talent agency. Yeah. You're Castel right. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's my that's from that's casting that's agent. A, yeah, they named the the term casting for TV, film, and commercials and voice acting after Dan Castellaneta's uncle, who's who is my agent. What the? Yeah. What the? What the? F okay. And Dan Castellaneta. Uh, that didn't work. No, that worked perfectly, Joel. You're on to something. Canadian Homer? How did they get over? Wait, yeah, we need a Canadian Homer. That'd be so cool. I guess, yeah, some people would say that Stephen Harper is basically Canadian Homer. That's true. That yeah. is true. He reminds me so much. So many, <laughs> so many of Stephen Harper's policies reminded me of Homer. Yeah, it's got Homer behind the fucking. But uh, just true is more like Mr. Burns. Yep. And I guess uh, Elizabeth May's like Maggie. <laughs> Elizabeth May's like Maggie. So for the international um, uh, viewers, because I like to tell yeah. people yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. about what the this is an educational is. podcast. No, is, yeah, uh, Elizabeth May. She's so much like Maggie Simpson. Look yeah. her up on Google. Elizabeth May is our only female prime minister. Yep. Yeah. And who's Marge? Sophie? So Marge is Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. Yeah. And then um, Bart... You know what? Tr Justin Trudeau's son kind of reminds me of uh, Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. I forget. Xavier, I think. Xavier, yeah. The one he so, went to see uh, Star Wars with or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. They, went to, uh, they went to like a... Oh, they went to Oppenheimer together and he went to Barbie with his daughter. Yeah. Because boys like Oppenheimer and girls like Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Mix it up. Did you see him on uh, Justin Trudeau on uh, Stephen, Stephen Colbert? Colbert? Yeah, I saw some of it. Yeah, they played the clip of him coming out of Return of the Jedi. Oh my God, yeah. And he thinks it's better than Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, and that's the most controversial thing he ever did. <laughs> that is one of the most controversial things he's ever done. Yeah. But no, I was... Sorry, I... Imagine I, he came out and... Uh, <laughs> There's a clip of, the, after they showed the clip of him uh, oh. seeing Return of the Jedi, there's another clip of him reading your short story that you wrote as a kid. A Star Wars, baby. <laughs> Star it's based Wars. off of this. <laughs> no, it'd be cool if they're like, so Justin, what did you think? Uh, what do you think of Return of the Je Jedi? And they start speaking like um, Huttese. He's like, Ewana <laughs> <laughs> Wonga. <laughs> what was your favorite part of... Yeah. What? No, I was just trying to think of more questions that he would say. Like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. What I was just, your, What was your favorite part of Return of the Jedi? Oh, uh, I loved uh, the Boba when Boba Fett died. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> he, he's like, you know what? In that eighties interview. He's like, that'd be so cool if Disney Plus made a series about this when I'm Prime Minister one day. And he that's yeah, in the tape. that's yeah. in the tape. Yeah, that's so crazy. Well, I didn't Simpsons know he had anything to. See, you're so right. Simpsons are so much like Canadian politicians. And you know what's so interesting? So you said that um, you said that Justin Trudeau is kind of like Smithers or Mr. Burns, yeah, right? Yeah. And Stephen Harper's He's kind of like both. Homer. He's a bit of both, yeah. So it's kind of implying that Homer and Sophie Gregor Trudeau were a thing and they gave birth to Xavier. Yeah, and it's kind of like the way people think that Margaret Trudeau fucked uh, Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, yeah. yeah. So there's some interesting topics you're bringing up yeah. to me. Yeah, that would be um, absolutely bananas if it came out that Xavier Trudeau was uh, Stephen Harper's son. That would be crazy, but you know what? I could totally see it happening. I can't believe that Justin Trudeau is still divorced. Like, find a lady, man. Oh, yeah. You like, know what? Maybe get... get I like, guess no way I could see. I'm, I'm, I think like so, he'll start dating someone or someone something, but a few people I could see him dating. I could see him dating Grimes. Grimes, yeah, that would be good. I, him dating like uh, I don't know, the girl who played the cop in Corner Gas. Yep. Oh, I know her. I wish I knew her name. Yeah. I, one thing I will say is.
So, yeah, I want to think of more people, but I'm finding it interesting. I feel like Justin Trudeau hasn't been on Murdoch Mysteries yet, or has he? It would blow my mind if he hadn't. Okay. But I he, bet he, I think he has been on you know Conor what? Gas. Maybe he's been trying, but they just, they're, they're hard they're, to get on. You sorry, we have so many Canadian actors who have only been in Dude, one other thing to get on. Joel, actually, I, th- this is just remembering, I think you guys were both up for the same part. Yeah, he was, he, Ma- Mysteries and he you was going to be part. in, uh, uh, he was going to be prison guard in uh, The Things We Do for Love, episode one of season 15. But they just saw my self tape and they were like, I think we got to bump Trudeau again. Yeah. Yeah. Trudeau really was mad at me. I think that's why he he's made my, my year so difficult this year. Oh, yeah. He has. He has a vendetta so against powerful. me. He's really mad that I got that role. Am I the first person who's been on Murdoch Mysteries on your podcast? I Unless if maybe Rod, Rodrigo Fernandez Rod, probably. still has Fuck been on Rod. it. And now that yeah. I think about it, um, I'm trying to think of all the guests I've had on. And you know what? Oh, yeah. I think like, so on the, um, yeah, actually on the, I, it's probably like the fifth or sixth episode I interviewed this actor. Um Yannick. <laughs> the international listeners are not. But Yannick is the star of Murdoch Mysteries, which is essentially like Canada's version of CSI. Do you aspire to have, like, I know you're like you're going through your friends right now. Do you aspire, once you've gone through all, all your friends on this podcast, do you aspire to get, like, David Cronenberg? Well, see, and- the last person that I had on this podcast was giving me advice about... She thinks that she could potentially get Justin Trudeau on the podcast. That would rule. Because he did the WNBA podcast that's Canadian. So yeah, why would Sonar he? Network, yeah. Yeah, so we really want to get Justin Trudeau on the podcast. I He would, he did, you know what? It'd be a shame if he did the Tonight Show, but he didn't do this. Yeah, and... I mean, he didn't do the Tonight Show. He did late, oh, late he's, night with uh, he's a Ironman guy. Yeah, he's a he, well, Colbert. But yes, uh, it, let me ask you this: Would you, if if Trudeau could only come on at a certain time and Cronenberg could only t- come on at the same time, would you have them on at the same time, or would you have to? Who would you bump? Well, the interesting thing is that you're not. Um, I would. I oh, know, I stumped him. I don't know. Well, I would. It's so interesting. What there's so many things I'd think I'd have to try to do, and I, th- I think I, I don't know. It's simple. It's very simple. Go on. I would have to. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire it. <laughs> No, they, I <laughs> Cronenberg's in one room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. Trudeau's in the other. Well, that is, that has crossed my mind. I would do that, and I was also I might have to get them to combine bodies, like um, do it like a David Cronenberg sort of body horror thing. That's potential. That's a potential. But I, I was I was thinking. Yeah, I I, this, I stumped him, folks. Oh I, yeah, you I stumped, stumped him. I had He's so, pretending he has an answer, but I, I know so he many fucking ideas, doesn't. But then I lost hope in all of them. I was going to say mud wrestle. Have them mud wrestle each That's other? That's not funny. Well, then I was going to say cat fight, and then I was going to say. <laughs> no, okay, I think I got. He found it. it. He found it. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't want, well, want me to pose you the question again <laughs> oh, so you can edit so- it. Okay, no, 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 no. It, okay, go on. So the way I would pick between uh, uh, <laughs> Justin Trudeau and David Cronenberg is simple. Smelly diaper competition. <laughs> <laughs> whoever, 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 can make, whoever can make the smelliest diaper. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah it's simple it's simple what do you think about your diaper humor 
<laughs> if you shocking? told me about it in advance, you're like, hey, Joel, trying a new thing up, diaper humor, humor, I'd be like, no, don't do that. But I premiered in, it on in, this podcast. In, you know, in action, I quite like it. it it's it like the tape show. <laughs> the tapes do show that Every I find time. it very funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw it with a smelly diaper competition. <laughs> Yeah, so I, my bets are on David Cronenberg because he's <laughs> older. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like he's on the Ensure diet, dude. Like we've seen Cronenberg's movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can tell from he's watching crazy. those movies yeah. that guy has some smelly diapers for yeah. sure. Uh I feel bad for. <laughs> I feel bad for his parents. Eh? Who Cronenberg's or yeah? Why? Because of the the, the we know the Cronenberg, so we oh, know how you, oh you you oh so you feel bad for his parents for having to change his diapers <laughs> when he was a kid yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's why Justin Trudeau lost. Did he like he lost an, uh, a re-election right, and then he came back and I won? Know. I think that's, that's Pierre. I think yeah, that's what Pierre. I mean, Pierre. Yeah. That's what I mean. So we don't know. Maybe Pierre lost his re-election because he was so distracted <laughs> by how smelly his kids' diapers were. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say because he lost a smelly diaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your laptop is is. Do you need to? Yeah, <sighs> peek behind the curtain. That's just like, uh, um. It reminds me of Mr. Marvel or the the man, the Wizard of Oz. Mr. Mar, oh, uh, the the, guy, the, the, the peak behind the curtain. De- pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. He's just a man behind the curtain. Yeah. So Joel, I, um, I want to ask you, sir. I just was hearing some crazy shit over there, mm. but I want to ask you, um, do, do you like Star Wars? Do you like it? Do you want me to be? honest or do you want me to do like a weird riff no i don't know whatever you feel no, yeah actually give me your honest qu- okay. answer okay all right I, I i will not go into riff territory i'm gonna give my honest answer i grew up loving star wars yeah <coughs> quite liked it quite liked the i saw first movie i ever saw in the theater was the first star wars re-release in 1996 wow. and yeah and then uh was so excited for the prequels saw them each prequel, maybe twice or three times in the theaters. Yep. Loved them. Um, I also was really excited for the new ones. Saw all of them in the theater. Yeah. At least twice. And I think around the, when the TV, sh- when the Mandalorian started, like I was into the first season of the Mandalorian, second season of the Mandalorian, I was like, what is going on right now? And they really, they tipped it. Oh, they really jumped a shark. I feel like in the season finale of the Mandalorian season two, when Luke came back yeah, and I I was starting to be a little like careful about my star Wars love when I really loved the last Jedi. And there was so much like hate for it, hate, but not just like, it was like vitriolic hate. Like, like, and I was like, what do I love star Wars right or wrong? Like, is there a right way to do this? And then a, and then it just they just kept making shit and like the they they started to li- listen the rise of skywalker was so shit and they st- they kept making shit that was like just not good <laughs> and i was like I, do i even like the originals anymore it made you think that eh? i have not watched the star wars movie since you know like, yeah like like I, th- I think i got kind of a bad taste in my mouth from it too mm-hmm. But then after I really like went hard on Star Trek and I like burnt myself out, Mm -hmm. I think I had something in between that I was obsessed with, but now I'm into Star Wars right now and I'm really loving it. So yeah, I saw your Instagram post about how you wanted to dress up as Plasma. Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma for Halloween next year. (laughs) That would be awesome. I might. It might be a little expensive, but I'm going to see if I can figure out something like this. Do a f- start a new savings account just for a Captain That's Phasma a good idea. costume. Like every week, put in like a uh, hundred to a thousand dollars. You know what? It. Maybe I go. <laughs> yeah, I could also go to a scrap metal yard. I yeah, did one before. And just start collecting. Start stuff. collecting stuff. We're yeah. Asking people for yeah. So we'll yeah, if you guys have metal at home, you want to donate. Any type of metal will work. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, you also will probably have to go to take some some sort of welding class if that's the route you want to take. I did a little welding. I've done it. Oh, in your last weekend? In my last weekend when I tried to become a plumber in Kitchener, Waterloo, I did a little welding, so I think I could build the perfect Captain Phasma costume. So I'm actually not worried. Thank you for letting me talk that out. I... Do you have the equipment? Do you have like a welding wand or like a mask or no, anything? No, but I'm willing to beat the shit out of someone. Like a welder? <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even if you weren't, it'd be okay. Like no, it's it's want. it's for the product, you I know, know? I, I know. I'm just kidding. But I, I will figure out a way to be Captain Phasma next year. I was so just, what, what spoke to you about captain phasma is it similar to the wicked witch thing like do you think she's misunderstood yeah, a little misunderstood you know maybe didn't get the right like you know everyone thought she was bad but maybe she was good you she's know? betrayed by a very tall woman gwendolyn christie yeah and weird that they you never it's she's it's played by gwendolyn christie and you never see her face i know i was literally thinking that like Star Wars now these days, they love, like, they love, like, kind of having a removable face to show the actor, mm -hmm. such as Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. such as in the book of Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. So, I will say maybe there's a little sexism in there. Yeah. So, they're like, you know, because they want to show the star. It would be good to to, to have a I Captain Phasma have prequel the series, like, have her own D Disney Plus series. Yeah, or... Even if she wanted to do the podcast, I <laughs> Gwendolyn I would, Christie. and if you're stuck in tr like hectic traffic right now, just focus on the road. Yep, Don't focus worry. Focus on the world. We're just keep, talking about fast. Keep your but hands okay. on the wheels, no, folks. No, no, I know. Okay, so one thing I did. Okay, so I was watching the the prequels, and I was watching uh, Phantom Menace, and it is so funny. Just <laughs> charge our big is so. Dude, do you want me to grab my prop that oh, I brought? Yeah, yeah, please yeah, give a log. Hold on. Please. Okay, yep. Joel is grabbing a prop. What is the prop, you ask? And you'll have to tune into YouTube to see the prop. And dun da da da. Jar Jar. I love him. So it's a piggy bank. He has a Jar Jar bank, piggy bank. He, Jar Jar, he cannot catch a break in the movie, eh? He's so funny in the movie. I'm just thinking of, well, his experiences on Tatooine. <laughs> he, like, I don't know how they wrote this, but he, like, steps in shit. He steps in crap, like, when he's there. And then, and then, and then, during the freaking pod race, when he's about to, when he's, like, helping Andy out, like, uh, like start his thing or whatever, <laughs> a freaking camel farts in his face. <laughs> like Doesn't something happen with his tongue as well? Yes, he he, he sticks his tongue in the Padres thing. Oh he, my god! He feels what so an bad. absolute jackass. Yeah, well, I feel bad for him. They like tortured his character. And and during the final battle sequence, doesn't he have a really? Uh, like he's like Mr. Bean a bit. He is. He's really clumsy. I know they made him really go crazy, but I love him. He's and then so when he comes back, is it clones or Sith? Where he comes back and he's just like normal. Yeah, he's like very solemn. Yeah, he's and like sad. Hey, Padme, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> you doing okay, pal? Yeah, you pretty much. Yeah, they like to try to use him for dramatic effect. Oh, I want it. Yeah, he's like. So yeah, for the listeners at home, I have this piggy bank I had as a kid because as a kid I loved slapstick. So I obviously loved Jar Jar, Jar, Jar Binks. Binks. So I Nailed have this. It. I still have my Jar Jar Binks piggy ma uh, piggy bank. The bottom is gone from it, so I can't store my change in it anymore. Um, but you should do. I Go still funny. have it to get a to get the yeah the, the bottom. bottom of the the piggy bank. Yeah, I wonder if if they're available on eBay or something. I will look into that for you. Not the piggy bank, the bottom, specifically the bottom, the bottom yeah. that hooks in. Yeah. Well, on Amazon, they have a lot of not, like things that could help you. Like I got for this camera, I got like an adapter, so they might have Jar Jar Binks bottom bink, bottom bink, bottom bottom piggy bink. <laughs> That's probably what this was called, a piggy yeah, bank. Yeah, a Jar Jar Bink. A yeah, Jar Jar Bank. Yeah. Oh, I would. I wish that we had a Jar Jar Bank in Canada. <laughs> 
we might as well some yeah. of the fucking foolish uh institutions we have it, it does feel like in my uh in like the process of trying to get my money back and dealing with the scam sometimes it does feel like cibc is run by jar jar binks yeah it do, I honestly believe <laughs> that or Mr. Bean or some like I loved Mr. Bean and Jar Jar Binks as a kid. You know, I loved Goofy and Animal from the Muppets. They were all my favorites, but I don't want to be running my fucking bank. Yeah, that's totally like it, it makes me like really like not like like dumb, stupid slapstick characters anymore when they run my fucking bank. That's not yeah. what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what that means? That means if. You know, as you continue your career and um, you're doing your things, you, you know, maybe you're doing some big creative projects, you're directing like a big movie for a studio. It's mm -hmm. like you could almost blind cast, you know, you're doing a funny movie. You need like a hilarious slap. You could blind cast the CEO C of CIBC and just... Yeah. You oh, just it know. would be it's really like, funny. Like, obviously, he's terrible at running a bank, but I would, or she, or whoever it is, but he would be so busted. funny in yeah. my movie. Yeah, yeah. So like, you I'm, should he's that. the next Jim Carrey, probably. I, yeah, he could be the next uh, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, he could be I, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds in Ryan Gosling. Ryan all the Gosling. big comedy stars now. Yeah. Oh, so we really need to. You know, we need to consider that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so when I'm casting the, the, the big studio comedy movie I'm going to make, I will be at least auditioning the CEO, CEO of CIBC. Of, uh, of CIBC. Because he, he CIBC. terrible at running a bank, but seems like he'd be pretty clumsy, uh, funny and clumsy if we, we got we got him like trying to sit down in a chair or some shit. You yeah. Know? Mork from yeah. Mork and Mindy is running CIBC yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sits in a chair, rips a big ass sewer fart. <laughs> big ass what? Sewer fart. <laughs> the toilet humor is off the I charts right now. I don't know. Why. I'm just. <laughs> I think it's good. I like it, man. Big it's ass good. sewer fart. <laughs> yeah. Oh my I, god! It's going hard. I don't know. It's it's certainly the Wicked Witch. I think. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who knew <laughs> Margaret Hamilton had such potty humor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a potty mouth, Margaret Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, backstage, she's like <laughs> being, doing pull my finger jokes to, <laughs> yeah. to Judy Garland. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, we had some, we had a good time today, eh? Yeah. It's, um, Joel, this was, this was such a fun time. I enjoy you in the producer chair. I enjoy you in the guest chair. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have you back for sure. I'd love to come back. Um, Maybe I'll come back for the Trudeau Cronenberg uh, <laughs> a dirty diaper that would be so, competition. The dirty diaper affair. I'll, I'll bring a clothespin to put it over my nose. Are you the judge of the dirty diaper competition, by the way? Um, we might outsource it. Yeah, because you, because of your seasonal allergies. Yeah, you, and celiac. Yeah, yeah, so I think that we might... <laughs> Have you? I know you talk about celiac a lot and Kitchener Waterloo a lot. Do you talk about your allergies much? Oh, my seasonal allergies. Well, you know what? I don't, but I really should. I really should uh, have you know sit down and really have a whole episode dedicated yeah. to my seasonal allergies because i do think of that as a big part of your personality. It is a part of. Oh, and my cat allergies. Your yeah. cat allergy. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? That makes that's such a good point. That's such a good point. I don't know. It's heartbreaking to me that you have a cat allergy because I, I just really I love do, cats. You and do I think love cats, funny, yeah. But I can't touch them anymore. The yeah. older I get, the, the worse more it gets. Allergic I get to them. Yeah. Damn. I mean, it doesn't help that I live in such a small apartment with two cats. I bet it. it yeah, that would. You know what? I was fine though after I take the the allergy pills. So shout out to those allergy pills. They yeah, really those no name out. allergy pills I bought. I just from I just can't. Guardian touch Pharmacy in Roncesvalles, Ontario. Yeah, well there you go, buddy. It's it's you know you got to. Um, thanks for looking out for me. Thanks for protecting my allergies. I am I in many ways the way I'm aller I've never brought this up before, but the way I'm allergic to cats, gluten. And ragweed and pollen is very similar 
to Buddy Epson how he was allergic to the aluminum paint when he was oh. the original Tin Man. Right. So that's, that's fair. There's a lot of crossover. Were so. you afraid putting on the green paint that you may have found a new allergy and you wouldn't be able to be the Wicked Witch? You already promised on Instagram you would play the Wicked Witch. I, I really was extremely worried, but then I, I called... Um, a lot of friends and I mm-hmm. had a lot of conversations. I, w- I was one of those friends. Yeah, I missed the call. Said, you left a voicemail though and I didn't call you back. Yeah, <laughs> but I, j- I could tell what you're thinking and a lot of you guys were like, Ben, go for it. Yeah, we all w- left it straight to voicemail, but you could tell we were thinking that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring up the way Bud- Buddy Epstein almost played the Tin Man. Did you know that Jean-Claude Van Damme almost played the Predator in Predator? Wow, I did not know that. So you pl- almost played the alien guy. Yeah, it was a different design, and the the costume was a lot more like restricting, and he he hated it. And classically, a diva that guy. But this was before Bloodsport. This was for before he was big. So, but they recasted him. That he so his sad. face was going to be covered, but there is pictures of him in the uh, the costume. God, I feel so sad for him. Is he okay right now? He did, even though he's had an incredible career since then, he. He Literally, he's to. never dropped that vendetta. He's never gotten over the the predator thing. I've heard you can't watch to catch a predator around him. He gets no, so upset he gets really upset. He yeah, just the the name predator. Yeah, I feel so bad for Jean Claude Van Damme. He's there's a lot of reasons too, and that's one of them. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. Well, Jean Claude Van Damme, he famously played a uh, French Canadian in the film Death Warrant. Does that take place in Canada? No, but he just plays a French Canadian. Oh my god! But Maximum Risk was filmed in Toronto, and is that a movie he's in? Yep, everything's filmed everywhere. Yeah, and somebody uh, told me a uh, story about him getting kicked out of Zanzibar Strip Club when he was filming that film here. Oh my god! Yeah, Jean Claude, you dirty typer, you. <laughs> That's why they kicked him out. <laughs> it wasn't because he was making it the the dancers uncomfortable. It's because he shit himself. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, that's crazy, Jean Claude Van Damme. You are you confuse me, but he's so. Yeah. That sounds like the way you said you confuse me there. It reminded me of uh, Jerry Maguire. If it was if it was different, instead of you complete me, oh, you, you confuse, confuse me. me. <laughs> oh, I want to be in that movie. <laughs> They should do the Jerry Maguire special edition starring me. Canadian Jerry Maguire. That'd be so you cool. You confuse me. You know what I, I really want? And like if I ever get cast in a big like movie or something, my one request would be uh, that I get to like during the whole filming of the movie, doesn't matter the genre or something, but I get a hold of microphone. The whole movie? <laughs> yeah. It's just Is this be, just because you're you're used to stand up comedy, stand up comedy interview, podcast, and yeah. so like it feels amazing. So any movie you catch me in, that'd be so cool. I'd love to be in Lord of the Rings with a microphone. Yeah, but then but or, or imagine Star Wars. Even I have one hand on the microphone, the cord, and then I get the lightsaber too. I really like the this. lightsaber. Yeah. Oh you, my god! And with Yoda Witch too. Yeah, with the microphone riding. Oh yeah, it's really good. I'd like that. Yeah, it's it's your thing. Yeah, I the we have to have a serious change in movies. We've had the silent era, we've had the colored film, we've had the talkie era, the so I superhero think era, the microphone yeah. era. Yeah, I would love that. I would watch a whole movie like that, and I'm surprised it hasn't been made yet. But I mean, we got close with the movie punchline with uh, Tom Hanks, but in between the stand-up clips, he. What he did put the, exactly. the microphone down. And that's yeah. why I gave it, and that's why I will. I'm. D- I refuse to even rate that one on Letterbox because he put the microphone he down. He put the microphone down, and then I said bye bye Letterbox account. I'm deleting your ass, and you deleted Letterbox because of that. Yeah. No, and like the weird thing about um Letterbox, it's like every time I, I like I just like I, I that Tom Hanks thing. It pissed me off so Punch much line, that yeah. every time I type it in. My mind just like when I see Larbox.com, my mind just starts <laughs> smelling dirty diaper. 
<laughs> it's so weird. It is weird. Yeah. Ooh, daylight savings tonight. Oh my god. Okay, so we have to stop then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's getting close to the cutoff point. We all know what the cutoff point is, so we don't want to miss anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, election night too. Fuck, we didn't get into that. Halloween. Um. So who do you think's gonna win? Cuts off. It's like <laughs> the end of Monty Python. Well, it would be great if if, if it's uh, a tie and. They so they say the, the they get Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, both give them a diaper, yeah. <laughs> make them shit themselves, yeah, and they decide who the leader of the free world is through a dirty diaper competition. And so, oh my gosh, that is such a good idea. Are you listening to this? Someone's got li- someone from America's got to listen to this and tell some people. I think by the time it like it, it, election night comes around, most of America will have listened to this podcast. Yeah, so. this will be wh- people better picture and picture this. Yeah, with that, yeah. So this is this the was podcast our, that changed the world. This was the election special. This was the Halloween special. He's dressed as the Wicked Witch. Dressed as the Wicked makes, Witch. He makes excellent points. Yeah. Oh my God! If me and Donald Trump had a lightsaber battle, <laughs> I have green lightsaber. He has orange lightsaber. <laughs> Yeah, you both are similar right now. You, you were you both wear a lot of face paint. I know it's true. He does too. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you, Joel Edmiston, for uh, Joel Edmiston. 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 Yeah. For coming on the podcast, of Acadian course. Joel. Acadian Joel. We didn't even talk about your Acadian, right? Well, I did uh, get in touch with my Acadian uh, ancestry this summer. I visited some Acadian. Cousins, I hadn't really thought about my Canadian uh, Acadian a- an- ancestry before this summer, but it was pretty eye opening, and they have a, a a very nice culture over there, and uh, it was it was it was interesting getting in touch with that. Yeah. You should do the Acadian Entertainment Podcast. podcast. Yeah, we'll, we we will we will franchise this out, but we gotta press stop because we don't want to get cut off during mm-hmm. a good point. So this merge means merge boot podcast, merge boot, podcast. Merge boot a survivor podcast. Joel baby on Instagram, Joel baby on TikTok. If you want to see some cat videos, they like the cat. Um, uh, and uh, what else do I plug? I don't know our short film. Yeah. Um, but it's not released. But you know, we it will one it will day. one day. Yeah. And um uh. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need we need a plug for you. Um My album? The hell was that? I don't know. Uh, Your album it's called I'm the Best. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. Sorry, that was uh between two ferns. Yeah. Moment. <laughs> Between Jar Jar and Jar Jar and the Wicked Witch, yeah, yeah. you would. Um, uh, this is probably the first time on a podcast someone dressed as the Wicked Witch while a Jar Jar Banks that's so piggy cool. bank yeah. sat next to them. I, uh, uh, yeah, Open AI, try making try. You yeah, can't re- no. you cannot. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You may try, but you cannot. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming on. And yeah, thanks for having uh, me. For the visual viewers, show off your Friday the thirteenth. Uh, uh, oh yeah, we should finish like this. Oh yeah, Friday the thirteenth th- socks. Yeah, we're not scared. Of Friday the thirteenth, and we have the ruby slippers still. Yeah, first time. I f- this might be the first time a podcast host has hosted with ruby slippers on with a Friday the thirteenth <laughs> socks guest. On. guest yeah. Jason was misunderstood, and we'll talk about that later. I think so. I th- I could get into that. Yeah, yeah well, next time. Yeah, we we got uh, happy Halloween, everybody, and that was awesome. We have. Yep, we're we're bye guys.